بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي O oh my Lord, expand my chest with assurance and make my work easy and untie the knot in my tongue so that they understand my speech. Allahum anfa'ni bima allamtani wa allimni ma yanfa'ni wa rizqni ilma yanfa'ni wa zidni ilma. O oh Allah, grant me benefit in what you have taught me and teach me useful knowledge and provide me with knowledge that will be beneficial for me. and increase my knowledge right assalam alaikum everyone i'm really sorry last week with because of the technical issues we were not able to join the class and do the class but i'm really glad mashallah that you guys were able to memorize and share your uh, memorization of duas which is very important that's why we are doing the class so i will share my screen in a minute all right so welcome to everyone i have to say one thing before i start the class to all of you that i'm really really proud of you mashallah i'm really overwhelmed um by the amount of response you guys have given and uh, the duas that has been sent to the tas each and every one of you should be very proud of yourself i'm really really proud of each and every one of you and i just want to say one thing to all of you just remember that when you see the grade so i don't grade you by the way but um the the teacher assistants the tas they do that but when you are graded and maybe someone or someone's uh, someone gets an excellent job or someone gets a good job you know at the end of the day remember why are we learning these duas so we can get closer to allah subhanahu wa taala we are learning the duas of one of the mightiest messenger of allah subhanahu wa taala musa alai salam also remember that musa alai salam was not appreciated by the people not only by the people of the pharaoh but also by his own people but remember he never gave up this is the thing we need to learn from musa alai salam that people can will never be happy with us but allah subhanahu wa taala as long as he is happy with us as long as we are connecting with allah subhanahu wa taala that is important so inshallah um if you have not uh, if you didn't receive like uh, the excellent grade or whatever i don't even know uh, much about the grading system but i'll tell you one thing um it's only because you know maybe you need to work a little bit more it's not to say you're not doing well it's just to say you're doing well or you need to do even better all right so remember that you i want you to remember that this is what we are doing in the class it's it's one of the most important thing in our lives because it's not just for this world we are going to be needing all of this in the next world inshallah we will meet musa alai salam in um, in jannah al firdaus uh, in the jannah of allah subhanahu wa taala we will meet our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that's our aim you know so just remember that so i want you to be very proud of yourself for all of you because mashallah your effort allah always rewards the effort of his people and then always remember that we are always in the uh, process of getting better at what we are doing whether it's in this life or whether it's in that life and in this life a lot of things can look like they look like competition but they are not they are not competition all the time you know we are not in a competition to beat each other or to be better than others but we are in competition to better ourselves so i want you to remember that that's a really important concept just remember that okay and we all have come to this journey by making a lot of mistakes and we will keep on making mistakes because that's what uh, allah subhanahu wa taala mentions in quran as well that you know we all uh, you know we all make mistakes and we as long as we are we can make uh, uh, correct ourselves that's great okay um he who never make mistakes never learns always remember that so alhamdulillah let's start our class now so just remember that that i am again once again very very proud of you i'm really um it brought tears to my eyes when i was listening to uh, the duas you guys have 
uh, sent and I actually was in the class for a few minutes last week when the other teachers were taking your class, this is Samia and Aiza. And I was just so, so proud of you, even from, um, when I, when I, I was just there, there was something wrong with my um, internet, but I was able to get in the class for five or 10 minutes. And I was so proud and I was really crying that all these beautiful children, they were able to recite these uh, duas, okay? So make, may, be sure, be, be um, happy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be very proud of you, inshallah. So now we start our class, I'll share the screen. So as we know that the uh, as we know that we have been doing a sorry on this sorry I just need to open my class okay all right so as we know we have been doing these duas so the first dua. Um, we did was a Rabbi Shali Sadri, which we know, and then we have done uh, Rabbi Inni Zolam to Nafsi, Bakhfirli, my Lord, indeed I have wronged myself, so forgive me. Rabbi Najini, Minal Qomiz Zolimin, my Lord, deliver me from these unjust people. Rabbi Inni Lima An Zalta Ilayya Min Khairin Taqir, my Lord, indeed I am for whatever good you send down to me in need. I'm in need of whatever good you send down. All right, so we have learned. We have been doing the story of Musa alayhi salam and we have um, done Surah Al-Qasas. Uh, now, the, the, the dua which we have already done, that's what we are going to discuss in the story of Musa alayhi salam. Um, and that is that I, Musa alayhi salam, now he, remember what we did? Or he, I discussed with you that he has gone to, he's, he's being asked to go to Fir'aun. And uh, in Surah, uh, Surah Taha, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, this dua. Please don't write on the screen uh, and just hold on a second. I'll make, uh, I'll add the teacher assistant as well. So, I just need to do something. One thing, just hold up. All right. Okay. Now, Musa alayhi salam is going and he has asked this dua, which we have already learned. And when we go into this, uh, what has happened so far? Uh, what has happened is that Musa alayhi salam is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this dua. Why is he asking this dua? Allah, Musa alayhi salam is saying, yeah, um, he's, you know, he wants clarity because we remember we talked about the fact that Musa alayhi salam sometimes gets, um, when he's angry or when he's in, very emotional, he starts to stammer. So he's saying, loosen the knot in my tongue, okay? And um, so he's saying, expand my chest. That's the first thing. So he'll be calm. He'll have clarity in speech. He's brave and he has comfort. Why? Because he, he can get angry when people will say wrong things. Uh, he needs clarity in speech. He's a bit nervous as well. And he wants a comfort because Pharaoh is a tyrant. So Musa alayhi salam is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill his heart with courage. And so that he can do his obligations connected with this great mission of a messenger. And so give him confidence and fulfillment. All right. The purpose of revelation of the Quran is to remove our burden and to ease our affairs. As Allah taught our messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the same thing. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, who is he telling these things? To uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then, وَيَسِّرْلِي amri. Second part is make my task easy. Why? Because he's going to enter into Egypt, which is heavily guarded by the ruthless soldiers. He is returning after several years, so he's, he doesn't know what's happening there. He's also a wanted criminal for murder, uh, which he made by mistake, but still. Then he must enter the most dangerous zone, the palace. And the palace is the whole city in itself. It's very gu heavily guarded. He has no army with him. 
he will have his brother with him and he's entering the building where pharaoh is the most secure building on planet earth at that point so he knows his task is really difficult so he he's asking a he's asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, make him make his work easy okay so whatever good we are going to do any obstacle that we see that we find it difficult to overcome it seems seems impo- impossible for us this dua shatters it all when your chest has light as the light comfort and belief that allah is with you then everything becomes easy and achievable wahlul uqdatam min lisani one difficulty is that he he knows his own weakness so you know he knows his own weaknesses so you know his own weakness the stammer in speech so when he gets upset he gets really um, he starts to stammer so he's asking allah to untie the knot the important point is that musa alaihisam already solved his problem when he made the first dua asking allah to expand his, his chest when his chest is expanded in terms of given comfort calmness and bravery then automatically he will become um um he will not become upset okay but we need to keep in mind musa alaihi salam also had excellent language skills because he was raised in the palace okay so he learned ancient egyptian language so he would time uh, so but also he learned hebrew because he was spending his time helping the people the slaves uh, who were the uh, the bani israel all right so and then he learns learns um, goes to madian and he learns another language of his wife so he's got really good speech okay so he've got three languages already so now uqda means knots that are jumbled it is a representation of confusion so uqda means confusion also so there are too many things too many things are confu- uh, you know um, so he is asking allah to give his speech doesn't get confused and jumbled it's clear, clear it's clear, it has clear clarity and it is it is organized as well okay so he's asking allah not only that he pronounces things clearly but when he gives the message he has the beginning middle and end um, a lot of you go who go to i mean we all go to school and you would know how to write a, an essay or a paragraph that you have a beginning then you have a middle and then you end your speech so you know uh, he is asking allah to be at the uh, at the right state so he can talk clearly but also his message is clear and strong and powerful and then fourth part is deeply understand he wants allah so by allah to make these people understand his message clearly he was conscious that he was not a fluent speaker but a slow speaker okay so he knew that as a messenger he would have to be a fluent fluent speaker to impress the pharaoh and his courtiers because pharaoh is a very you know high five person so so when you speak to someone and if it's an elder make sure that we also understand their point of view so he he's also saying that you know that people understand his view and he is able to understand so we keep check that language we use the tone everything is good so you know when you're talking to someone older than you so that are you know that's why i remember i told you to do this dua even when you're talking to your parents because sometimes when we are too upset or too angry or too excited we can't talk properly okay so addressing people knowing the audience level of understanding appropriateness of speech background you know all of these when we need to overcome our weaknesses with clarity and communicate with clarity then we should make the best use of this wonderful dua done by musa alaihi salam so whether you're talking to your parents whether you're talking at school whether you're talking with anyone just remember this dua this is a very powerful dua all right and then what ha- happens now musa alaihi salam has already publicly humiliated pharaoh now he is uh, that he is a liar so you know the generals have started to question pharaoh's authority that he is not qualified to handle the threat the musa uh, that musa alaihi salam is posing so they have a secret meeting and they decide that they will take care of this matter by themselves and kill musa alaihi salam and end the threat as they need to gain back the control of the city and the people pharaoh is supposed to tighten the security and take care of the threat of musa alaihi salam all right now now he is faced with a challenging decision love of power love of musa you remember pharaoh loved musa alaihi salam because musa alaihi salam grew in his palace but he has to choose between the two and he of course loves his throne so he 
he chooses the love of power and declares a death sentence to kill Musa alayhi salam. All right. He is um, he gives his army to kill Musa alayhi salam. And he's the most tyrant leader. So ordering the most elite army to kill one man. Okay. So there's only one man, Musa. He says, go ahead and kill them. Everyone's after Musa alayhi salam. Now in the previous incident, when the soldier were behind Musa to kill him on sight, he ran away from the city and took refuge. He stayed there for many years and was in hiding at all this time. In this incident, Musa is not hiding. He's out in the public. He's walking in the neighborhood where the police patrols. He is right in front of the Pharaoh facing him. Remember, so last time he ran away, but this time he's still there. Now Musa salam makes this dua. Now there is another dua which Musa salam will make. And it means, I have taken... So, Allah Musa, inni ustu bi Rabbi wa Rabbi kum min kulli mutakabbirin la yu'minu bi yomil hisab. I have taken refuge with my Lord and lo your Lord from everyone who vexes and arrogant who does not believe in the day of reckoning. So, Musa alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, uh, just give me a second. I think there is a little glitch. Uh, I have to correct. I'm sorry. I just need to check something. Sorry, I have made someone post which I was not supposed to. Um. I'm sorry, just give me one second. I'm just sorry. I just need to solve this problem. I think I've made someone co-host who was not supposed to be. Um, and I'm not very good with this IT thing. So I just need to solve this. You just hold on a second.
Um, I'm sorry about um, this. Um, there was some technical difficulty. I just was uh, trying to sort that out anyway. So um, Musa alayhi salam is now doing this dua. Before we understand the dua, we need to first understand a little bit of grammar. When we begin any surah asking Allah's protection, we say, A'uzu billahi minash shaitan rajim Sorry, the Arabic is wrong here. Uh, I seek Allah's protection, refuge from shaitan, the accursed one. A'uzu is derived from awaz, which means you are holding on to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay? And are not you're not going to let go of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you know, you're, you're really stuck to Allah. You want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect from shaitan. So, Musa makes this dua using the past tense through which he is stating that it is not the first time he's taking Allah's protection. He did so when he ran away from Egypt, remember? So he's saying, Ustu. Ustu is the past tense uh, of A'uzu, okay? So, mighty army versus mighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Musa alayhi salam through this dua showed Pharaoh and his general that he might have the mightiest and the most powerful army, but it is nothing in front of the tightest and strongest connection that he has with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All right? So, um, so remembering that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our Rabb. He is, he has the authority and Musa alayhi salam is his slave. You know, he says he is my Rabb and your Rabb. So, you know, when you seek refuge in Allah, then you are not scared of other people. He's also telling Pharaoh that what you think that you will come and attack me, Allah is in control of you and your army. He is your Rabb. He said, what? Ustu bi rab, Rabbi wa Rabbukum. Like, be Rabbi, my Lord, and Rabbi, Rab, your Lord. Both your Lord and my Lord, okay? So his language is what? He did not, and also he did not use the name of Pharaoh in that. He generalized it. He opens the scope of this dua by saying, anyone who is arrogant, who is full of themselves, he is, may Allah protect me from those people, okay? So he showed that only Allah is worthy of worship by calling out to him. In the sight of Musa, Pharaoh has absolutely no respect. He did not even feel his name is worth mentioning in the dua. He just said some arrogant one. So we should seek Allah's refuge without having to name the people in our duas, okay? When someone is mutakabbir and arrogant, they have no concept of day of judgment. They think they, they, they will live forever. That's what Pharaoh thought. And, you know, they don't care about the consequences. So what happens at the end of the day? We have to remember every mutakabbir, every proud one will stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should never end up underestimate the power of the dua. The mightiest army was uh, after one man and they failed because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected him by destroying their whole nation. Allah sent natural disasters after natural disasters that kept the army busy from recovering from the disasters and rebuilding the city until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them all together by crushing the army in between the sea. See, so after this, when they were trying to go and kill Musa, Allah sent um, the, the, you know, different type of punishments on them. The punishment of blood, the punishment of disease, the punishment of the insects, frogs, all those things came to them. So they were so busy in trying to protect themselves that they, they could not even kill Musa, alayhi salam. Okay. So inshallah, we'll finish the story today here. And we will start um, in the next story next week. So we did uh, a bit of the seed of Rabbi Shrali, and then we did this. Now, going to Medina reader, okay? Inshallah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So remember, and I keep this manners because manners lesson we did long time ago, but I, wa I want you to remember the manners all the time because manners are uh, the foundation of our religion as well. We need to stand, we need to have perfect manners kindness, courtesy, humble, uh, not talking uselessly, and always uh, being conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay? So, so far um, in your homework from the last to last week, uh, you guys uh, did exercises, and we will, um, um, so you guys did page number 20, I think, up to page 20 and 21. Um, and then again, we are still on uh, lesson number. Uh, we are on st still lesson number three, and um, we have learned some new vocabulary. What I was going to do today was, um, I will. I was just going to go through the huruf al qamariya and huruf al shamsiya again because uh, we did it, but I think we need to do it one more time. So al huruf al qamariya and al huruf al shamsiya. 
So we know that Arabic has 28 letters and they are divided into um, the uh, solar and so, so solar is the sun letters and moon letters, okay? Sun and moon letters. So why are they called sun letters and why are they called al qamariya If you look at them, when you say al, when you put al in front of any uh, letter, uh, sorry, word, and when you say it, you'll say al-abu, al-bab, al-janna. So you can hear the lam, the uh, lam of al in this, okay? Whereas when you say at-tajiru, can you hear the al? No. At-tawbu, at-diku, at-zahaba, at-zahabu, ar-rajulu, ar-rajulu, at-zaharatu. So you're not hearing the lam. So in huruf al shamsiya we don't hear the lam. It, it is merged into the letter. And you can see a shadda after that, you know? So that's why we, we merge it. But in Al-Huruf Al-Qamariya, you will always hear the lam clearly. Al-Ain, Al-Ghada, Al-Fam, Al-Qamar. Okay? So you just remember that. So the initial lam, the lam is uh, dro not dropped, but it is merged. Okay? So just remember that. That's really important. So the, uh, the, um, the Arabic term for sun letters is Huruf Al-Shamsiya. Okay? So, I mean, we don't pronounce the L. Moon letters is al huruf al qamariya So, it's based whether they are merged or not merged with the L. Okay, so when the definite article, why is a definite article? What does definite article mean? When we say Al, it means we know exactly what we are pointing out. The, the teacher, the door, the uh, boy, okay? And we are not saying a. Uh. So, for example, in Ar-Rahman, the merciful, uh, a name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we say Ar-Rahman. So it's a huruf as shamsiya. Whereas the definite article retains, so it sound um, in the moon letter Al-Ard. So just remember that, okay? So that's um, that's that. Uh, we can, I was uh, going to do the a bit of sira today with you as well. I wanted to start because we have learned about the manners of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam um, as well. Um, but I just wanted to quickly um get the get some power, uh, some of you to just read uh, a little bit from Medina. So we will do 10 minutes of that. All right. So I'll open the Medina reader and we can do some exercises. All right. Al Kalimatul Jadidatu, new words. So we have learned some new words like Al Qamar, Jadid, Qadim, Wasikun. Nazifun, Harun, Baridun, Sagirun, Kabirun. So let's see um, if you guys can read as well. Um, let me see if Isa is with me now. All right. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Who's this? I am Muhammad Umair. Okay, Muhammad Umair. I would like you to uh, just um, go over these new words. And if you do you know the meaning, okay. just let me know. Okay. Al Qamaru Jadid. Al Qamaru Damun Jadid. New. Qadimun. Old. Wasikun, dirty, nawifun, clean, harun, hot, baridun, cold, sagirun, small, kabirun, big, maftuhun, open, maksurun, broken, sakilun, sakilun, heavy. Khafifun, light. Jamilun, uh, beautiful. Waqifun, standing. Jalisun, sitting. Very good, mashallah, mashallah. All right. Um, now, where uh, we can have next, Jazakumullah Khairan, uh, we can have um, okay. someone else who can read no. a little bit. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am Ayman. Okay, Ayman. Uh, start from here. Yes. Najmun and Najmu. Deekun 
الديكو رجل الرجل طالب الطالب okay now Ayman yes just tell me uh, what's the meaning of Najmun uh, star okay and uh, is it Ashharuf uh, Shamsi it's what is it like Ashamsiya or Qamariya Shamsiya and Naj Mashallah, yes, and all of all of them are Shamsiya. Okay, and what is Ar Rajulu? Uh, man. The man. Okay. The Adiku. A rooster. Yes, and Talibu. Talibu. Good, Mashallah, Mashallah. All right. Ah, Jazakumullah Khairan. And just remember, look at this. Najmun, uh, Najmun. So there is a dhammatan and an najmu. Remember, we talked about that al never goes with the dhamma uh, two uh, tanween. There will always be uh, one sound an najmu. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Next person. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikum um, assalam. My name is Hada, and I'm. Um, Najmu Baidun. A Najmu Baidun means the star is far away. A Rajlu Wahifun. The man is old. I mean, okay. A man is? I mean, the man is um, standing. Um, top. I mean, standing. standing. Yes. And then a sugar hulwan, the sugar is sweet. A talibu maridun, the student is sick. A diku jamilun, the rooster is beautiful. A daftaru jadidun, um, the desk is new. I mean, yeah. A tajiru ganiyun, the merchant is uh, um rich. Addukanu Maftuhun, the shop is open. Al Waladu Fakirun, um, the Al Waladu boy, um, Fakirun, the boy is short. No, um, uh, it's, um, uh, what, what do you think it is? I think the boy is um slight and I mean uh short fakir fakir poor poor oh yeah fakir I remember but um at tufahu the reason the apple is um tasty at tabibu tawilun wal mudarrisu qasirun the um tabibu is um doctor uh tawilun the doctor is tall um and yes. the teacher is short mashallah mashallah well done Okay, next person. Iqra wa uktub ma dabt. Awakhiril kalimat. Read and write each of. Okay, we're not going to write. We're going to read, but you can write it in uh, at, as your homework. Teacher, we have done that as homework in the okay. last class. Okay, mashallah, yes. Sorry. Um, yeah, I don't remember on top of it. Mashallah, that's good. Okay, so uh, who is this? You can read it for me still. Uh, okay, teacher. Uh, teacher, we need to read just it or uh, we need to tell that meaning. Yeah, you have to tell me the meaning and do you know what haraka will go on that? So when you say alba, it says albab. Well, what will it be? Albabu. So you have yes, to be, yeah. Yes, teacher, I know that. Okay, give me, give, give me the first line. What's your Al name, sorry? Samiha Fatima. Okay, Samiha. All right. Al Bab, Al Babu, uh, the door. Mm -hmm. Hello, ma'am, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. Carry on. At, uh, at Tajir, At Tajiro. At Tajir. At Tajir. At Tajir. At Tajir. Sorry, ma'am, I don't know that meaning. A Tajir is like a um a merchant, someone who 
Okay, ma'am. Uh, cells and trades. I'll comma. I'll comma. Uh, I'll comma row. Mm -hmm. Is it right, ma'am? What's al kamar? Al kamar means al kamar the moon. Remember, we are doing huruf al shamsiya and huruf al kamariya. I just talked to you about the moon letter. So kamar means moon, okay? And shams means sun. Okay. Okay. What's this? Adiku, the rooster. Okay, and what is this? Al ma'u, water. Okay, it's al ma'u. Okay, so it's a hamza. So don't, uh, I can hear the ayin sound. So don't say ma'u, it's ma'u, which means a water. Yes, correct. Mashallah. Thank you so much. Jazakallah khair. Jazana wa iyakum. All right, next person. I, I'll take two more and then we I have still have to do Sira with you and I don't have much time. So Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um name Sarirun. I need to know your name. Uh I do not know. Okay. Asarirun, the bed. Okay. Bed. Al Baitan, the okay. house. Just remember when al comes, we say asariru al baitu. We will never say the un sound, the tanween. Okay, al baitu. Okay. Al masjidu, the masjid. Mm -hmm. Al rajalu, the man. As as the sugar. Al waraku, the paper. Mashallah. All right. Who will do this one? I just want one person and then we will do the Sira class, inshallah. I know a lot of you want to do it and maybe, you know, we will we will do this every class. I will get everyone to get a chance. So whoever has done today, uh, we will, and whoever misses out on today, inshallah, you will get a chance in the next class. All right. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum My name is Rahim. Okay. And Rahim. I have a question that we have to like, um, like say the word before honey. Sorry? Do you have to like, find a word to say before money? Yes. So fill in the blank in each of the following sentences with a suitable word. Okay. So what you have to do is you can find, you can, anything that is suitable. So you don't have to say exactly what, uh, what they were saying up there. So Ghaniyun means what? It means rich, someone who is rich. So yeah. who, who, anyone can be rich. You know, Tabib can be rich, teacher can be rich, boy can be rich. So you can use any word which you have learned. Yes. So go ahead and do it. That's good. What does that mean? The student is rich. Okay. What's the next one? Halwan means um so sweet. Um Okay, that's good. Number three. Married is sick. Short. Sick, sick. Someone who is sick. Okay. Sick, sick. Okay. Um. Al waladu marid boy is sick. Okay. Al tufahu lazizan the apple is is tasty. Okay. Al tadiu tawilun the merchant is tall. And. And um, Qasir means what? Qasir uh, means like, like poor. No, short. Faqir means poor, Qasir means short. Oh, okay, okay. Um, what does, what does, 
So you can say anyone is short, like you know, at Tabibu. Arjadu, Arjadu Kasira. Okay, mashallah. Good. All right. So the Jazakumullah Khair and mashallah. Um, okay, I want to say something and we will stop here now today. And inshallah, don't, don't, um, who is this? Please don't write. Or, and, and please, I want you to, when you sign in, please write your names and don't write uh, silly names, please. Okay, respect the class. Uh, anyway, so um, I know this was your homework as well. And um, at page 22, when you guys have, already done it but what i'd like you to do is now do page um, 23 i think you didn't do 23 and 24 and 25 okay so let's do that and then finish it inshallah what we'll do is we'll do a full revision of the le uh, lesson next week and then the week after we will do lesson four arabe the fourth lesson but before that i'll do a first revision uh, lesson with you don't worry but next week, do page 23, 24, and 25. Basically, 24, you have to just read it. Uh, we've already done that, okay? And then um, just do this one, all right? Um, any questions you can post in the group, uh, inshallah. Um, we have some time, and I, the reason why I'm going to stop this is we will do um, the Sira. All right, who is writing this? Uh, okay, so what is Sira? Why, what is Sira? Sira comes from the root Sin Ya Ra, Sara Yasiru. And what does the word Sira mean? It means to traverse or to journey. So it is derived, derived from the root word, which means to travel. The reason why Sira, the biography of a person is called Sira is because you're traveling his journey. You're following his footsteps. Even though its use can be for the biography of anybody, the Muslim scholars have kept it now only for the biography of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Sira can be biography or, uh, of anyone, um, you know, but uh, our scholars have kept this word especially for our, uh, the life of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why do we study Sira? What are the benefits? So Allah, they are numerous, they are many. Allah has commanded us to know this man. Who is this man? Our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's an obligation and there are 50 verses in the, over 50 verses in the Quran that commands us to take the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as an example of them. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ Indeed, there is for you in the Messenger of Allah an exemplary, man, uh, sorry, an exemplary manner, a perfect conduct. All right. So we have the perfect example and therefore the study of the life and times of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the study of someone we must follow. And amazingly, no matter how we look at the seerah, we will, benefit, we will benefit from it. No matter how you look at it. Whether you look at it, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a father, as a friend, as a husband, as a son, you know, he was, although his own parents died, but he always gave respect to the people who raised him. All right. Number one. From it, religion, in terms of how we worship Allah, we will learn from Prophet Muhammad Manners and morals, mercy and tenderness, leadership, how he led the Muslims to success, how he was as a father, husband, how he was as a friend and a neighbor. So when, so where then do we begin? When it comes to describing the one whom Allah has chosen above entire creation. So Allah has chosen our Prophet Muhammad above everyone. How is it possible to do justice when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we have raised you up your remembrance and mention. Allah has already made our prophet's remembrance, his zikr and his mention straight after, you know, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Allah himself called our prophet sallallahu rahmatan lil alameen, the embodiment of rahma and mercy. So our prophet sallallahu is, uh, his, his sending is mercy. His message is mercy. His teachings are mercy. He is everything associated with mercy. All right. Anas bin Malik reported that messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, none of you have faith until I am more beloved to him than his children, his father, and all of the people. So this is from Sahih al-Bukhari. Okay. So to know him is to love him. All right. So 
to know uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is to love him. How do we know? How do we know? Who is this person? Uh, we, we have not seen him. We don't know what he looked like. But if we go into the seerah, inshallah, and we will go into the seerah in detail from now on, we will know what our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looked like. We will know what he did, what he ate, how was he, what, what he did with, uh, in his normal life, what he did when he had some problems. Okay? So just remember, if, you, if we say that we love Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we know La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, we need to remember one more thing. And that is that if you love someone, you want to know about them. I'm going to give you a very simple example. And again, no one can be compared as Taqfirullah to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I'm giving you a general example because we all live in this world. That if you love a football player, if you know some, if you really like a player, or if you like someone who's like, you know, um, anyone who's really famous and you really like him, what do you do first? You go and try to find out where was he born? What did he do? What was he doing? You know, all of these things. You might have favorite people and that's okay. You know, we have favorite footballers or we have favorite um, sportsmen. Uh, I, my favorite uh, sportsman is Muhammad Ali. I really like him. And I have watched uh, his life story. I read about him. So, but because I like him. But when it comes to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is a part of our, our faith. We have to love him. And we all say we love our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But if we love him, we need to know more about him. And on not only the facts that, okay, he was born in Madi Mecca, he moved to Medina, he died in Medina, he had how many, uh, he had three sons, three daughters, four daughters, sorry, and he had this, but we need to know more about him. We need to know how he led his life because when we know about our Prophet Sallallahu we will just keep loving him. And when we, inshallah, see him on the day of judgment, we will be able to see and know and recognize him that this is our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, okay? So we need to spend our life in learning about our Prophet ﷺ, not just because your teacher is saying, not just because your mom is saying, or your dad is saying, just because who said? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that. And also because when we know about him, we learn to live our life in the best manner. Okay, remember we talked about manners and we said the best manners were our Prophet's manners and his manners were perfect. And that's why we need to learn. And then we can live our lives according to that. So inshallah, uh, we will carry on uh, with this lesson, um, okay? So your homework, and I will give you, there is 10 more minutes, so I'll give you a few more minutes to ask questions as well, don't worry. So revise and memorize the duas of Musa alayhi salam. We have done it in this class, like, you know, so today we did Rabbish Rali again, and then we did another dua, uh, and inshallah, I'll share that dua with you. And then Madina reader, read, and write exercises on page. So I didn't say, uh, so you've already done that. So we will do what from page 23 to 25. 23, 24, and So do that. Um, inshallah in April, I wanted to actually do, if it has already started, uh, I want to hear your duas. And if you have already memorized it, try to perfect your tajweed, okay? Okay, now you can ask questions. If there is any question, you can ask now. Assalamu alaikum. I am Anut. Yes, Anut Walik was salam alaikum wa And I have two questions. So, no, not questions. So, you know how you said um, the dua of Rabbi Shahli? Mm -hmm. I, um, when I, ha I go to my madrasa and I asked yesterday, oh no, no, not yesterday. Yesterday or day before yesterday, I read the dua when I was reading my sabak. Okay, mashallah, that's really nice. That's wonderful, Anud. And that's what you need to do, remember? 
when you do your sabak when you are when you are talking to someone yeah remember that dua that's very nice i'm glad you're sharing this with me thank you for sharing um you're welcome and i think you were saying something but probably you were put on mute okay Okay, so I have another question. So when we say um, we in Arabic, when we say like, if we are saying as um, if you're saying like beautiful and nice and kind to someone else, when they are not repenting on us, what will um, what will like, what will Allah Subhanahu wa Taala reward us for? So you're saying that if you're saying nice things to people, but they're not doing that, is that what you said? Yeah. If yeah, if we are being so nice to them, though they're not paying it back, right? Um, what will Allah Subhanahu wa Taala reward us for? Okay. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells us in Quran that people who do nice things, who are kind, who feed someone, or who are nice to people, and then you know allah taught, uh, allah gave us the language allah said you have to say that in nawa uh, not i'll show you so in surah insan allah subhanahu wa taala says that then they say to those people we don't need anything from you we don't need um, um we know we only need our reward from allah subhanahu wa taala okay so uh, you know in nama not amakum we 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 are giving you food and in this it's about food but anything you do if we are doing it for only for allah we wish not from you reward or gratitude so always remember that when you do good things allah says always remember your reward is from me not from that person okay so if they are not being nice to you what did we learn we learned a hadith remember in our class that if you do if you if you uh, someone does something mean to you but you don't you keep quiet you get a good deed and they get a bad deed so allah rewards the person who is nice allah always rewards kindness so if you're kind to people you will get the reward even if they, they don't give you but he is watching you remember that so do things for we should all try to do things for allah subhanahu wa taala of course it's nice if people are nice allah says that that if someone is nice to you you need to show them gratitude as well because our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that who he who does not show who is not grateful to people will not be grateful to allah but if they are not showing you gratitude it's okay pray for them okay okay jazakallah jazakallah all right next person Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum. My name is Rahim and my question is that I remember he said that ism means noun. Yes. So can ism mean more things than just noun? Not that I am aware of. I don't think so. Why do you ask? Have you have you seen any other meaning of that Rahim? No, I'm. I just thought that they might have. Okay, good question. No, I I believe as far as I know, ism means noun. Ma ismuk. What's your name? So ismuk, and the kaf and the n is your ism is name. What is your name? Okay. So oh. ism means name or noun. Yeah. You know, nouns yeah, no. are naming words, so ism is also yes. a naming word. Yeah, because ism is noun. Yes. All right. Assalamualaikum. Um, my question is, um, is it the homework? Um, so do we have to write all of the things like write twenty three, twenty four, and twenty five, all those pages, and the new words? Um. Okay. So when it comes to twenty three, um, memorize them. If you can write, that would be really good. Right. 
but uh, do the last page, right? Write the last page, definitely. Uh, but um, yeah, you can read the first two pages if you want. But I think when you write things, then you remember them more. And my name is Hada. Oh, Hada. Jazakallah khair. Okay, so you can read the first uh, page 23, 24, and then maybe well, it, I'll say read the following words and write them down. So write the um, last one. And then. Assalamu yeah. alaikum, ma'am. Wa alaikum assalam. Uh, I'm Samiha. My yes. doubt is uh, what we need to write in page 25. Uh, like that, we did we need to write the words and its meaning? Like yes. That... So okay, what you have, uh, so two things. See what it says. So write the meaning, but also separate them. If it's a haruf as shamsiya, right? So make two columns. So make two columns, right? Okay. And then, um, so for example, uh, for example, um, you make a, a column. All right. And... Uh, so you make two columns and then... Yes, ma'am, I understood that uh, make columns and uh, uh, do yeah. that as moon letters and sun letters, uh, yeah. then separate yeah. each like that, no? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what you do, okay? So you do moon, okay, sun... Then, uh, then ma'am, page, in page 24, uh, can I write like, uh, like this... Uh, like this page 25 if you want to yeah exactly like that okay ma'am all right thank you ma'am no this worries so Jazana next person I've got three minutes three, three minutes i have to go Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, I'm Aid Mujibula. Okay, Aid Mujibula. How can I help? I was, I was going to ask if you're going to send the homework on WhatsApp. Yeah, I will send these notes. The notes I do, I always send it. So, inshallah, I will send you this. Where is it? Today is 15th March. I'll send you this. Okay. So homework is at the end, inshallah. Okay. Okay. Right. Who's next? Two more minutes. Um, do we have the quiz? Because um, I don't know if we have a quiz or not. What's your name? Can I have your name, please? My name is Simra. Okay, Simra. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, yes, uh, you will have a quiz at the end of the month. One quiz. Uh, I mean, two quizzes, like one on uh, the Arabic and one on the thing we do in the class, like the stories we do. Assalamualaikum, I think the kids are done. Okay, okay, cool. Um, that's fine. All right, then children, we will inshallah finish um, this um, class and uh, we will we will finish it. And Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu la ilaha illa nastaghfiraka wa natubu ilayk. May Allah accept and uh, bless our efforts and may Allah make all our tasks easy and may Allah make us the people of um, Jannah and may Allah make us the people of best manners and best akhlaq who follow the seerah and the sunnah of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.